Hi, sorry about that. I had a little technical difficulty. Um, let me just type on here. I started a new um, live stream. I go back to my channel. Okay, so this is all working now, I guess. Um, really sorry about that. Um, don't know who's here. Okay, I see there's five people who found their way back. This is the kind of technical difficulty that I've been having and um, have to abandon this one video. Let me see. I have to get back to my channel too. <clears throat> That's the old one. Let me go again. Hello. Sorry. And now I'm on the, the new live stream. I see that there's three people here. There's five people still watching the other channel. Eventually they'll figure out that I'm not there anymore. Or maybe it will just end. Um, maybe it's not ended. Just give me a, bear with me for a second, folks, because it's still live with people watching, and I need to figure out how to end that one. Um, so I will end it. Just give me a second. Um, nope, I have two live streams going at the same time. Don't know what to do. <clears throat> Okay, so someone says good save. Um, Brighton. Yeah, although I have my other stream still kind of active, I should have definitely ended it before I started this one. Um, so people don't know actually that it's over and I don't know quite how to to end that one and not this one. So, um, but I'm gonna keep on working here. Maybe we'll get a, um, more people over here as we go. Um, if someone still sees that other one up, oh, let me just check. Sorry. Sorry about the distraction. Just, I'm going to go flip to that other one and see if I can put another text message up there. Um, let's see if I can end it, end it. Um, watching no doesn't let me end it from there okay so I will get back to painting thanks for thanks for um, sticking with me here um, or, um, just need to get that other one up. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so, sorry about the technical issues here. Um, sort of the process of painting and monitoring a live stream sometimes is a lot, um, especially when it doesn't always um, go well technically. <clears throat> okay, so this is where I kind of start refining things a little bit. I've got about 40 minutes left in this painting. I, I'm not going to finish it here, but I'm going to try to get it as close as I can to looking um, finished. So now I'm starting to think about the form. This is the top of the cheek. 
the side of the nose here, the cheek coming forward a little bit. I want to make double check this measurement here. It's looking um, really close. Come in with this smaller brush and really define that um, the line of that top lip. It's really hot here tonight. So, um, for those of you that are still here, it looks like there's eight of you. Um, if you can let me know who's still here with me. I see that Bryden is here, and I know that, um, now I'm forgetting her name, had to leave because um, she's in the middle of a hurricane. But it's nice to um, know that she wanted to, to watch anyway. And this is where I had to move the edge of those glasses over a little bit. So I need to kind of paint out um, where the old edge was. I have a grayish red color in there, which is the sort of the inside of the, the radius of the eye here. where it came down along the nose. And I can go back and clean this up a little bit. Okay, so I have this brush. Um, so John's here, Jennifer, um, hi, and uh, Lauren LeDrew, great. Um, there may have been some people that just kind of had it on um, as the background, and they may be still be watching the old one, but that's okay. Um, not, if I guess if they were paying attention, they would have known to come over here, and um, that's fine. I don't, I'm not really hurting them any. I suppose I'll still get the watch time from them, even if the video isn't doing anything. They're still, they're still on it. Um, YouTube just sees it as there. They have the video open, watching it play, even though nothing is moving. Okay. So the key to this maybe is painting slowly, but um, it's kind of hard to get those really fluid marks if you're you're moving too slowly you get sort of the jitter of the hand in there if you move quickly then it sort of evens that out a bit trying to get um, those lashes dark enough and the same with the eye so coming in with some pure black right there And I'll know in a second whether I have the eye in the in this eye in the right place because when I um, get that the highlight on the eye, it'll look right. Um, this is I want to get a little bit of white paint sitting right on top, and that will give that um, that illusion that it is that um, light reflecting. Um, and then this outer edge just a little bit softer so that it's um, sense that it's moving away from us in space and then okay so I gotta soften this up a little bit again and then um, the outer edge of this eyeball should get a little bit darker as it um, moves towards the corner and away from the light and then I have the shadow of the inside of the eyelid right here. It's looking a little bit reddish purple. It's very subtle. I didn't put it down quite so subtly, but I'm going to rub it back a little bit. Okay. And then 
there's the top of that eyelid right there and that's looking about right and then there's some eye lash and eye shadow along the outer edge of that and if I done all those like fairly faithfully to what's happening in the photo then it's then it would starts to read right it's kind of like here I can't um, I can't fake it so much I really have to look at see what the resource of in the image is doing if I really want to get um, that realistic feel okay um, so so yeah it does feel like um, that eye is pretty close to the right place I think I could shave a little bit off this outer edge here and maybe give a little bit on this edge a little bit more okay mm, too much there. okay so that's looking pretty good and <clears throat> now I can be a little bit more confident with the edge of this of these glasses Right here, the eyebrow is starting to show up. So I'm just adjusting that lower ledge of the eyebrow. I have to adjust the upper edge a little bit. And likewise, I'll have to do the same thing up here if I want them to stay even. And so I'm going to go do the same thing with this other eye because um, this is really the focal point of the painting. Just those very dark irises with that little bit of light um, shining in them. There's a little bit of a red edge on this side for whatever reason, maybe reflecting something that's a little bit warm, some of the warm light or just um, has a little bit of brown in the color and that's coming through. But in any case, it does look a little bit warmer on that edge and trying to get enough blue. So a little ultramarine blue, a little white with all the, the other colors that are kind of in there. And not quite getting the right shape or the right color yet. So I got to work on that. Maybe just throw down a little purple with some of the white. Yep, I think that's this is going to be a little closer. Not quite dark enough. So some of this color mixing just sometimes is just going back and forth till you get just the right color and value. Yep, that's a little bit better. Okay, I got the tear duct here, and then I get the lower line of the eyelid. Really, it's pulling down quite low over here and then up. And then I have all the stuff that the eyelashes and the shadows are doing on this side. And a little bit of the eyeliner that's coming in, kind of reddish. Okay, so I am. I think I have the the iris in the right place. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get that highlight to sit right on top, right there. A little more paint. Yeah. Okay. So I think those eyes are kind of reading right. And if I can get the colors and values around the eye, then that's sort of, that's 90% of this um, painting. Yeah, 
something's not quite right there. This, yeah, that is right. Okay, that's where I want that bridge of the nose, the glasses there. Okay, um, work on the shape of this cheek over here comes out a little bit further and then back. So, want to pay attention to the subtlety here, the, the darker red in the cheek. I'm just going to paint right through where the glasses are, just uh, for that sense of continuity. In fact, the, the rims aren't quite in the right place yet, so I'm just going to paint that out. So I can just adjust this back and forth until I get it just where I want it. Okay, you guys are being quiet, so I want to know you're still there, that the sound isn't going crazy or something. A little bit nervous now that all this stuff keeps on happening. <laughs> Okay, got something a little bit off in this round shape here. This, I think this comes in a little bit tighter right here. Okay, so let's try this one more time. Yeah. Okay, doesn't have to be super perfect, but just to get the right idea. Okay, got one line of the um, side of the glasses that way and the other up that way. So they should converge kind of to a um, vanishing point, and they don't look like they're doing that yet. So I'm going to try that again. I think I just got to point it up a little higher. Yeah, that's better. I don't know if it's accurate to the photo, but it just looks more right. Okay. Let's see that I'm not really getting quite the form of the nose yet, and that's sort of important. So I'm going to start to work on that a little. Ooh, it's quite hot. Hold on, I need to take a water splash break. Okay, oh, see, I see some questions now, good. Um, Jennifer says, still here. Um, uh, Loran says, I started following a bit later. John Iotis, all good. Loran says, it's all good here. Jennifer, holding our breath as you paint. Oh, that's for the storm. Um, Chan Chanix, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, or Chanks. Um, do you use cotton panels or linen panels? Um, I use a, um, a gesso, um, gessoed hardboard panels. The brand I use is uh, Mona Lisa, um, partially because they're so damn inexpensive. I think that the really hate the surface of the panels, but if I put on a layer, um, additional layer of gesso, um, the brand that I've been using, I get the surface just the way I like it. So it just takes, you know, a little bit of planning and about uh, two minutes of work to get the panel to where I want it. Um, and the panels, you can buy them on Dick Blick. They're very cheaply priced on 
there for an eight by ten panel it's a it's a dollar um, about a dollar thirty um, for the panel this size is 12 by 16 it's closer to three dollars but that's much cheaper than ampersand panels for example that are in the um, eight nine ten dollar range for similar sized panels and getting up to this 12 by 16 um, maybe fifteen dollars a shot which is not a ton of money but when you do as much painting as I do and um, work that no one's going to buy to just um, pour a lot of money into the panels um, when you can get very similar quality panels for a much lower price then that's um, that's where I'm gonna go so that's my recommendation check out um, Mona Lisa panels on Dick Blick um, and uh, just be aware that the they're gessoed panels but the gesso surface is very slick non-absorbent and so you really do need another layer of gesso on there before they're adequate for painting on. I do know uh, at least one painter, she likes the surface being that slick. She just has figured out how to paint on them and um, took her a while, but now that she's used to them, that's the only thing that she wants to paint on. I, I think she accidentally bought a huge amount of them and then instead of uh, throwing them out or doing something else with them, she just dis just decided to work with them and eventually that's what she liked painting on. Um, but for me, I need to put that layer of gesso. Sometimes I've sanded a little bit, but um, I like just the, the straight uh, layer, one layer of gesso on there. It's, it has the absorbency that that works well for me and then the, um, the right amount of tooth. Okay, I have a feeling this eye just feels like it should be a little bit um, over just a little bit. You see that? And then the pupil itself is about in the right place. So that just means that I just don't have enough um, white in the eye here um, before I get to the tear duct. Like I said, I don't mind repainting an eye if it's in the wrong place. Just you just get used to it. If you want, if you want the painting to look right, you kind of have to make these kind of adjustments um, before it does um, read. Um, as the forms start to feel solid and things feel like they're properly placed for the anatomy. Um, and you can only do that by getting the, by getting those features right on the mark. Let me just um, clean up this line over here. and then reinforce this highlight. Okay, back to the nose, getting it to, getting those forms to read properly. There's a little bit of this dark redder edge on the lower part of that nostril. And then the inside of the nostril is dropping down a little bit faster than when I have it down this way. So Brian asks, um, do you recommend the use of a color checker? And um, on the on the YouTube channel, um, I think it's called Draw and Paint. Now I can't think of the name, um, but it's this guy that um, talks a lot about using a color checker. And I've never used one, so I can't, um, 
I can't recommend it one way or the other. I just have uh, always eyeballed my colors and when I'm all done with the painting, the color may feel a bit off, but hey, I'm working from um, a photo that's on a monitor that um, that isn't a specific pigment or um, solid color. It's really dependent on the monitor itself. And so sometimes that image can look cooler or or warmer depending on the lights in the room and um, how much I'm sitting in the dark that color can really change and so there isn't really anything to color check against in some respect because it's not the same as holding two colors up against each other one is a, a is a elect electric emitted image and the other is a solid colored image so the between the the monitor and the painting itself so a little bit of technical difficulty being able to um, to do a color check okay kind of missing her nostril on that side a little bit so let's see if I can get that um, laid in properly. Okay, that's starting to read now. Whether it's in the right place is a different question. Okay, and sorry, just Okay, and then I think this cheek line is just out a little bit further, and then I'm just going to put the little wisp of hair that's here that helps define that um, cheek a little bit. So don't have quite the line of her jaw quite right yet. I think it just comes down a little bit faster over here, and then swoops. So this is notoriously difficult for me, is getting the jawline right and getting it to turn in space um, correctly. Okay, how do I describe that? It's, um, I may have it in the right place, but it will look wrong because sometimes it doesn't look like it's um, turning away at the right speed. missing something there. Just, I keep on looking and comparing to the photo and it just doesn't have the right uh, feel to it yet. So sometimes that takes me about a hundred tries before it really starts to feel right. That may be something I work a little on offline, but I just kind of want to give you guys a sense of that process because it requires a certain amount of um, of correctness, of exactness, before it starts to work. And I have to have this thumb actually come up a little bit higher into her lip. Okay, Lorenza um, says goodnight again. I guess the the storm is still um, is still raging raging there a little bit. Okay, get a little bit of a lizard and crimson coming down into separating um, the thumb and the finger. <sighs> So this hand, hands are notoriously hard, but um, this one, it's more dependent on the silhouette of the hand than any other um, feature of it. And just getting these little um, 
shadow areas in the right place is um, is really important to getting this hand um, to read correctly. It's not really a whole lot of information there, so getting those those little things that are evident to get them to read properly is um, have just become super important. So have to get the knuckles up a little bit higher here. So one up like that. And the third one. Okay. Some of that um, just having a little problem with color and value control there, but um, but it's pretty close. And then this goes really white in here. So I'm just going to rub off some of the paint and then come in with some, some pure white. Now that looks just ghastly, but if I rub it in, then it'll start to look right. And I can play around with this edge. It doesn't have to be a hard edge where the sweater is. It can get really um, soft and blendy in a couple spots just to create a little bit of interest. So I got one knuckle, two, and three. And then this one has to come out a little bit further. Okay, and we still know there's this braid here. There's not a lot of difference between the color of that and the sweater, but I um, want to differentiate it a little bit. <laughs> okay, so I don't think I have quite right the angle of her neck or the neck in relationship to the head. Um, doesn't feel quite right, doesn't feel like there's this movement between the the angle of the neck, the angle of the, the chin and the neck. So I am going to work on that too, maybe offline. But I'm just going to um, work on this go about 10 minutes longer. Thanks for sticking with me with all of these uh, technical difficulties. Um, just uh, while we're still going here, just um, want to say, um, if you can, please subscribe to my channel. If you're, if you're not subscribed already, that way you get, um, uh, then you get notice when I do go live or when I post other videos. I haven't done any highly produced videos in a while just because they're so time intensive to produce. Um, um, but uh, when I I have a couple in mind that I want to put together and have started writing them. And um, so if you subscribe to my channel, at least you'll be notified when that happens. Um, also, I'm starting a mailing list. Um, don't have it fully together yet. Um, some people have given me their email addresses um, through a direct message on Instagram, but that's very time intensive to hand um, type out um, people who've joined. So I'm trying to get a form uh, page together where you can just put your email address into the form and it um, drops you into my email list. Okay, need to squint down here a little bit, see what's working and what's not. Um, just little touches I can see, like there's just um, this line of the eye just comes out a little bit further. So I'm just going to improve that a little bit. Get a little bit of a dark mark coming down there. Yep. 
that's very, all very subtle, so don't have to go crazy with that. Okay, and then um, let's get a little bit more eyeball there. Okay. Okay, then on this eye, even though I have some of the details a little blurry, there's just a little reflection that's on that lower eyelid that does um, create that sense that the, um, that the eye is a little bit wet. And then I'm also adjusting, sorry, where this lower lid cuts in. still need some adjustment there. There. Okay. That looks about right. Just a little bit lighter light on the edge of the white there. A little bit up here. This cuts in a little bit more. And the shape of this is a little different than what I have it. You guys still with me here? <clears throat> okay, so about just a few more minutes, I think, for tonight. Um, let's soften up that edge a little. Okay, this is where I needed to go back to the bigger brush. Okay, I know that she has a little more chin than what I gave her. So that starts a little bit back further before it straightens out here. That's starting to look a little bit better. And then I hadn't been really paying attention to these forms around the mouth, but they're important too to get everything to read. There's the corner of the mouth that has a little bit of a dark um, shadow edge there. sort of points a little bit. There's a little bit of shadow on the underside of the lip right there and on the other side see if I can get a little bit more of the alizarin permanent getting in there. And then the direction of the lips still a little bit off comes up a little bit higher on this side so just little, I mean, it's such subtle stuff here, but it does make a difference when you get it right. Because then you get these little things starting to feel very convincing. I don't know, convincing that it's not a painting or convincing that it's an actual thing that you've, looks like the person looks like it's doing the right thing. You may still realize it's a painting, but just will look right. Okay, and then that far side of the lip then is not quite as fat. But what I'm missing is the volume here. So what I need to pay attention is the top of the lip. There's a little bit of a lighter area here. And a little bit of a highlight all running along the top edge here. And 
including just some little uh, almost pure white spots and then this very strong orange red don't quite have the right color yet let's almost go pure orange I think there we go it's not it's not perfect but it's starting to read so I'm gonna go with that right now I've oh, got some white in there where I didn't want it okay and then gotta adjust the upper edge here sure nothing's frozen at this point nope still frozen hopefully you can still hear me and just really subtle adjustments to get these lips kind of the right place in space to correct the separation in the lips a little bit there we go so if not the perfect color but at least starting to read correctly in space kind of getting starting to get the fullness of them I have to go and around the face and adjust all the forms so that they have a similar sense of accuracy and once I've done that then the whole thing will really start to to read Okay, so it's just about 11 o'clock. I'm not done, but I am done for tonight. I um, have a couple commissions that I'm working on, so even before this painting is finished, I'm going to do um, some work on those. And so thank you all for tuning in tonight. You are um, great supporters of this uh, endeavor that I'm doing, which Hopefully, it's. I feel like it's you know somewhat for benefits of my followers that um, seem to be interested in learning more about this kind of stuff, and so I'm glad to do it. Um, it gets me doing the thing that I want to be doing anyway, which is painting. I just have to do it with the with the camera rolling, and. Um, and I hope to see you next week or some other time if you can tune in. Please, again, subscribe and um, click the icon for notifications. Um, please share with friends or, um, or you know, just let them know that I'm doing this if they, you think they would be interested. Um, please like um, this um, this live video or the other one too that um, is still rolling apparently and um, also once the video ends it's very helpful if you um, then put a comment um, if you just do it now then it's just going to show up in the in the feed but if you wait until I've ended it then um, it's uh, more evident for people who are coming later to see your comments okay um so that's it it's um it's well on its way and i when it's done i'll post it to instagram so you can see the uh, finished product um thank you all um, and have a great night